Iranians drink a lot of tea. How much tea do you drink every day? You could say tea is basically the national drink of Iran. Iranians consume about 3.3 pounds of tea per capita every year. That's more than the per capita consumption of India, the United States, South Korea, Spain, Denmark, Italy, Romania, Portugal, Thailand, Philippines, Greece, Venezuela, Peru, Colombia, Brazil, and Mexico combined. We drink it for breakfast, after lunch, after dinner, at weddings, at birthdays, at funerals, with friends and enemies, when we're bored, when we play games, and when we have indigestion. With one of these. Tea is so integral to Iranian culture, it's hard to imagine life without it. But here's what you might not know. Before the 1800s, Iranians didn't really drink tea that much. In fact, they drank coffee. And at one point, there were coffee houses everywhere. Ahvekhune in Persian. Hi, I'm Yar, and I wanted to know, how did tea become Iran's national beverage? And what happened to all that coffee? So we don't know exactly when coffee and tea made their first ever appearance in Iran. Some say tea came first, specifically Chinese tea. One source speculates that it may have been the Mongols who first brought tea to Iran back in the 1200s. And coffee spread throughout the region after it emerged as a beverage in Yemen around the 1400s. But here's what we do know for sure. By the late 1500s, when Iran was thriving under the Safavid dynasty, coffee and tea had definitely found their way into the country. Of course, coffee was much more popular. The Safavids built a mighty empire. They moved the capital from Qazvin, where part of my family's from, to the magnificent city of Esfahan. And their king, Shah Abbas I, ordered the construction of a massive government center that still stands today as one of the largest squares in the world, Naqshe Jahan Square. And what's more, the inner part of that square was dotted with coffee houses, where people could of course get a cup of joe, yes, but also smoke water pipe, banter with intellectuals, recite poetry, listen to live music, flirt with <clears throat> and so on. As the 1600s roll by, coffee starts to gain more popularity in urban areas like Esfahan, and of course, it's a hit with the royal court. But it was still sort of pricey. So most ordinary folks would either drink water or sharbat, a refreshing Iranian drink made with fruit-flavored syrup. Sharbat. Which Iranians still enjoy to this day, by the way. Sharbat is a Sharbat al-balu. But tea, for whatever reason, wasn't all that popular in Iran. I mean, you could still find people drinking it, but Iran was, on the whole, a coffee-drinking country, like a lot of its Middle Eastern neighbors. So anyway, sometime later, the Safavid dynasty falls. Their capital, Esfahan, is taken by Afghan invaders in 1722, and Iran enters a really tumultuous period in its history. There's instability, poverty, civil war, destruction. Yeah, it's not great. Amid all of this, those lively coffee houses start to disappear. Iranians still drank coffee at home, especially the elite upper classes, but it started to fade away from the public sphere as the country fell on hard times. Then, in 1789, the same year that France has its fancy schmancy revolution, a new group takes power. Enter the Qajar dynasty. They had some pretty cool hats, and swords. Oh, and uh, mustaches. Yeah, mustaches. And it's during their rule in the 1800s that Iran starts to switch from coffee to tea. So, the Qajars move the capital north to Tehran, which is still the capital of Iran to this day. And during the reign of Nasr Din Shah, coffee houses popped up all over Tehran. Except, well, they started serving more and more tea, even though they were still technically called coffee houses in many cases. Or, Qahbekhane in Persian. But how did this happen? Well, as is often the case with these things, we can't know 100% for sure. It's not like there was one singular event that led to this shift. But scholars have speculated a few things. One of the most convincing, Russian influence. Iran's new capital Tehran was now much further north, in other words, closer to Russia, and exchanges between the two countries had grown quite a bit. Trade skyrocketed and tons of Russian merchants moved to northern Iranian cities. Russia had also inched closer to Iran after conquering some former Iranian territories, including what are today the republics of Azerbaijan, Armenia, and Georgia. Which is where my maternal grandmother's ancestors are from. Okay, okay, I swear, this is the last bit about my family's history, I promise. Well, my mom's mom is- Now, here's the clincher. This is the 1800s, and Russians, like the British, were already big fans of tea. Big fans. 
so big that they invented something called the samovar, a towering, decorated, voluptuous vessel for serving tea. And Qajar royals had gotten their hands on a few Russian samovars of their own. It was only a matter of time before tea in Iran, just like in England and Russia, became a sort of status symbol of the elite. And eventually, as it became more affordable, it trickled down to the rest of Iranian society. Okay, so another theory argues that Iranians had, or I guess still have, a major sweet tooth, and that tea paired much better with sugar than coffee, which Iranians tended to drink black. Though that one's a little bit of a long shot. Whatever the reason, by the 1800s, tea was finally within reach for many, many Iranians, not only in cities like before, but also in smaller towns and villages. New trade routes had made it cheaper to transport tea into Iran, including everyone's favorite new meme, the Suez Canal. The British were also exporting tons of black tea from India, which they controlled, to Iran, contributing even more to its popularity. And then, with demand so high, Iranians started to cultivate their own tea in northern Iran's cooler climates. Like the region of Fumanat, where tea plantations stretch for miles and miles. <laughs> So, wait a second. Tea's in the number one spot today, but what happened to coffee? Well, for the longest time, instant coffee has been a thing in Iran. But over the past few decades, coffee, good, freshly brewed coffee, has been making a serious comeback. Coffee shops, or cafes as Iranians now like to call them, have been popping up all over the country. Today, there's hundreds upon hundreds upon hundreds of cafes in Tehran. They're places where Iranians of all stripes get together with friends, share a conversation, or just blow off steam. And today, they not only serve coffee, but also juice, smoothies, ice cream floats, full-on meals, whatever this thing is. And, well, how could I forget? Tea. 